Is this like still good? Yep. Hallelujah, guys. I'm just getting ready. Just getting some information in here that I need. And um, we will start. Glory to God. Did that not go? Oh, here we go. Alright, uh, I'm just going to share this with a couple people. Hallelujah. Hey Mary, how are you? God bless you. You've been reading my book, that's awesome. Hallelujah. I hear it's a good book. Amen. Alright. going to share this with a few people. Just uh, let me know where you're watching from. Just pop up there. All right, guys, so as you get on, um, just tell me where you're watching from. And then also, if you guys would share this, share the broadcast, share it in groups. If you guys are in a group, um, share it in the group. That would be great. Um, it would be a great help. This is maybe one of the most important live streams that I've ever done. And um, you will see why in just a few moments. It's going to be very different. Um, we, we're definitely going to do this um, live stream from a kind of a different point of view. Um, than, than I typically do. So, um, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I'm just sharing this, guys, with some people. So, um, people are notified that we're going live. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Okay. So, yeah, if you guys, um, oh, awesome, awesome. Thank you for, for reading the book. Um, I hear it's good. I hear people like it, so that's always a good thing. Um, look, okay, so moving forward, uh, I am, I'm going to hold all questions until the end. Uh, and the reason I'm doing this is I'm also recording this uh, to put on my website and also on YouTube. And... Um, so I, I want to be focused and on point with what I have to say. That way uh, people that watch this later um, don't have to endure me talking back and forth to people. But I do want you guys to post your questions as we go. Um, that way I'll, at the end what I'll do is I'll go back and answer those questions. Um, so I told people I released a, a newsletter recently. And um, what I, what I uh, released in that newsletter was that that we are moving to California, and I said that we would release a video this week um, with more information about that and um, what that means for us and what it means for what it means for California, what it means for um, Kansas City, what it means for many for my traveling, um, and um, 
But I'm going to go through this pretty much kind of like I'm I, like a message because I want to make sure that all of the questions are answered and that my supporters and family and friends know exactly why, when, where, how we're doing this. And um, so if it looks like I'm reading sometimes, it's because I am. So um, first of all, why are we going? Why in the world are we moving to California? Well, the short answer to that is... Because God said so. Um, this is not some place I would ever move. I'm a Midwest guy. Um, I love to travel. I love to do things like that. But I absolutely would never move to California. It's not. I don't have anything against California. I actually love California. But um, I can just tell you that uh, as far as flavor of living, I'm a Midwest guy. And, um, you know, it's what I've known my entire life. I'm actually a farm boy. Many people don't know that. They think I'm a city guy. I love the city. I flourish in the city. I always said when I was younger, I would I would uh, move to the city, and I did. Um, but uh, you know, my, my comfort level is probably more in the Midwest. But that's okay. And um, so, in short, I would never do that if God hadn't told us to. And um, so, I'm going to tell you the story of what happened. I was in California. Um, it was actually my first time there, um, which was last May. I'd never been to California. We've traveled all around the the, the world and and done different things. I've lived different places in Mexico and different places, but never have been to California. And um, I was actually at the uh, Hollywood House of Prayer, which is right between the Roxy and the Whiskey Go-Go. For any musicians out there uh, uh, that have ever known, um, you guys know that those are two of the most uh, famous, iconic clubs in, in California and even in the world. So the Hollywood House of Prayer is actually right in between those two clubs, directly in between. And um, as I'm speaking, the Lord audibly begins to speak into my ear. And um, this is what he says to me. He says, I'm bringing you to California to assassinate the mimicking counterfeit spirit and to usher in a spirit of authenticity. I'm like, what does that mean? I don't even understand that. But I, I, I knew that... God wanted me there, but I didn't know why, I didn't know what that meant, and, and I dang sure wasn't going to tell my wife that we're moving from Kansas City to California. And um, so I said, well, God, if this is you, which I knew it was because I know my father's voice, I said, you're going to have to tell my wife. And so just a few days later, we're driving around L.A., and my wife, it's, it's, a, funny, it's a funny story because God will use all kinds of things to confirm but um, so we're driving around LA, and uh, she says, "Look, um, I bought a Costco card." I'm like, "Okay," and uh, we've never had a Costco card. And um, she goes, "Well, I bought a Costco card because God said that when we move to LA, we're going to need to buy a lot of food for people." And my wife had not heard me say this yet. And um, we had teased a little bit because people kept saying, hey, I think you're supposed to move to L.A. And uh, we would just joke about it. But it got real in that moment. I'm saying things got real. And um, I knew in that moment that God had spoke to my wife. And my wife is one of the most prophetic people that you would ever meet. Anybody that um, has known my wife, uh, has been uh, ministered to by, by, by my wife, will tell you that she is super prophetic, and, um, yeah, I'm talking, like, dates, and names, and social security numbers, and bank account, I mean, just crazy stuff, you know, and, uh, so when, when the Lord speaks to my wife, most of the time I listen, not all the time, but most of the time I listen, and, um, we knew then that this was serious, that God really wanted us to move to LA, but the question still was, why, how, where, when, how do you how do you figure all this out? This is the biggest move we've ever made in our lives, you know? How do you do that? And then you start looking around and you're like, this has got to be God, because how in the world could we ever afford to live here? You know, my, my, my house here, this is my studio. It's my garage. I built made a studio here in Kansas City. And, um, you know, we have a four-bedroom house, five if you include the basement uh, room, and, uh, you know, one-car garage and a big backyard with fruit trees and a driveway. And it's in a decent neighborhood. And uh, it's like 800 bucks a month. 
this house there is like six grand a month or something, you know? It's like, how are we going to do that? You know, our, our, our budget literally for, for mortgage and utilities is like 1500 a month, and we, we barely make that on the road. So it's like, God, this has got to be you. And so we, we come to the idea, we, we know that he wants us to do this, and um, then we're like, you know, it's always good to get the prophetic, you know, um, uh, confirmations. And l literally after May, we just got confirmation after confirmation after confirmation. Really prophetic people we knew that I hadn't said anything to yet that didn't know would be like, hey, um, I believe there's a big move coming for you, and I really see uh, California for you. Or people would be like, I really see Hollywood, or I really see this, or I really see that. I'm just like, this is God. This is God. Okay, God, so we know it's you now. We know you're saying go, but how? And and um, so let's just say, let's just go with where. Where? Why are we going to, so in short, we're going to Los Angeles. Um, why Los Angeles? Well, I'll get to that why, but more specifically, um, uh, we really feel like it's going to be the South Bay. We really feel like it's Torrance, um, San Pedro, Rancho, um, in that area, uh, mainly because uh, I, I believe that even though God wants me to go, I believe it's God's will for me to go, I believe it's God's destiny for us to go, it's really important, though, that my kids have a good environment. Um, we raise our kids for the most part, uh, my, my daughters, uh, we in the hood in Kansas City and, and, and urban cores everywhere. And it's, it's really dangerous. And, you know, we moved to the suburbs of Kansas City finally because we were released to get out of that environment. And um, it was kind of heartbreaking because when we moved out of the hood, my son was six or seven, something. I think seven. And he didn't even know how to run. He couldn't run. We, we had signed him up for Little League uh, football. And, and he couldn't run like the rest of the kids. We're like, what is wrong? Why can't you run? He, the reality was is this. My son never played outside because he couldn't because it was too dangerous where we were. And um, so he never learned to run. And I don't want, I don't want my son um, to continue to grow up. He's 10 in that environment. I want them to be in a place where he can go outside and have fun and, and play with other kids and things like that. So we're, we're not going to live in the urban core um, of L.A. That I know. Um, and uh, so why, why L.A.? Well, because, again, God said. And because what happens in Hollywood determines what happens in the United States. Do you guys understand that? Look, whatever happens in Hollywood dictates the action. It dictates the atmosphere. It dictates the attitude of the entire United States. And you know just as well as I do... Whatever the United States does, so does the entire world. That's the way it is. Even though the world complains about the United States, everybody always mimics the United States. It even reminds me of when uh, they when they invaded um, uh, what, what's his name Saddam Hussein's palace in Iraq. They found it was just filled with American movies. H him, him himself, American movies. He hated the United States, but he loved American movies. He loved it. You know, when they invaded Osama bin Laden, when they found his hideout, then what did they find? They found American movies. He hated America and wanted to kill America, but everything he was about was America. And um, so everybody mimics what happens in America. And when, they, when I say mimic, that's that counterfeit spirit, because what happens in Hollywood happens in the United States and happens in the world. It's not the heart of God. It's not the heart of God right now, because what they're mimicking is a counterfeit of God. So, why does God want us in L.A.? He wants us there to affect Hollywood. Now, you might be thinking, well, Derek, how in the world are you going to affect Hollywood? Well, anybody that knows me knows that, that I have a knack, for whatever reason, um, I get introduced, I get, I get uh, invited, I develop these relationships all the time with influential people. It's who God has always made me. I can have conversations with anybody. I'm friends with professional athletes. I'm friends with all these different people. Um, it's just something God has done. I knew the who's who in ministry long before I was ever a traveling uh, revivalist or apostle or whatever you want to call me. Long before I did that, I was friends with all these kinds of people. Why? Because that's the, the, the atmosphere God's placed me in. That's the part of the gifting that God has given me. Um, that's part of who I am. That's the apostolic nature is to be a networker. And so God will do it. And here's what I want to talk about 
briefly. It's the seven mountains. Now, some people have never heard of the seven mountains, so I'm going to explain it real quick. Here are the seven mountains. It's a seven mountain teaching. Some people call it the seven mountain theology. The seven mountains is this. Religion, family, education, government, media, uh, media, arts, and entertainment, and business. So it's, so it's religion, family, education, government, media, arts, and entertainment, and business. So I believe what God is doing um, is putting me into a place to where I can affect media and then arts and inter entertainment. So by media, what I'm talking about is TV, radio, and movies. You guys know I'm already in that. I'm already involved in TV. I'm already involved in radio. I'm already involved in film. Um, the arts and entertainment, I'm already involved in theater. This, this, I majored in theater in, in college. Um, I'm already in, involved in music. I was, a, I was a traveling musician for years. I, I was a signed musician. I already know how to function and flow um, with these kinds of people. And um, I'm telling you that God is doing something in and through this. i got to um, pull this up on here because my computer froze up. Hey, glory to God. I hope it is everybody watching, everybody shared, everybody shared in groups. Um, everybody uh, uh, post up your questions as you go, and I will come back and answer those. I just don't want to have a bunch of crosstalk. I want to get my points out there, okay? Um, so... What does this mean? It, it, it means this. When we impact the media, when we impact the media, when we impact arts and entertainment, it then impacts culture. So right now, everything in media is geared towards the liberal media. Everything in media is geared towards liberal arts, uh, liberal entertainment. If you just look at what media has become, it's so anti Christian, it's so anti-spiritual, uh, it's so anti the things of God. Well, the reason that is, is because the culture and the atmosphere of Hollywood is anti all that. So if you can make an impact in that environment, you then make an impact into the other things. Media will impact government. Why? Because people believe what they see on the media, and then they vote accordingly to what they see on the media. So what happens? So family is impacted by what they see in arts and entertainment. Movies make an impact. Whether you believe it or not, movies, listen to me, movies and entertainment and media make an impact into your family. If we can affect those things, the music, the media, the arts, the entertainment, then we will make an impact in our nation and in the world. Amen? Hallelujah. So, um... How are we going to do this? How are we going to make this kind of move? How is this going to happen? Well, there's only one way that, that it happens, really. And that's God. If God's in it, it's going to happen. But here's what I tell people often. Is I believe that even though it's God that makes it happen, I believe that God wants to use you. I believe God wants to use me. I believe God wants to use your church, your business. I believe God wants to use that. And so how do we do it? Here's what I'm hoping for. This is what I'm praying for. This is what I'm believing for. This is what I'm declaring and decreeing in the 2019. Here, we're on the first day of 2019. And this is what I believe. I believe that I'm going to find 50 people that will be able to give $100 for one year. Now, what does that do? That's a lot of money. You say, well, you know, that's $5,000 a month. And that barely covers what it costs for uh, a lease and for utilities. So, you know, that's not living in a mansion. That's not living in really something super nice out there. It's expensive to live there. That basically just covers our lease and the utilities to stay there. Um, that's what it covers. And I believe that, man, you know, how many people spend, you know, two to, to four hundred dollars a month on just eating out? You know, we don't have a problem feeding our flesh. Why don't we feed the spirit for a while? Why don't we feed what a uh, feed awakening in America? Why don't we feed what God wants to do? Why don't we can, can you know people sacrifice a little bit to see God move in America again? That's what I'm believing for. I'm believing that I have at least 50 friends out there that can give hundred dollars, and some of them might be able to give 50. Some of them might be able to give 25. There's no amount too small, but I'm still believing for 50 people to be able to give hundred dollars to change Hollywood, to change America. I've already met, we already got lots of people ready to, to launch out with us in ministry in, in Los Angeles. We've already met uh, uh, P. 
people in, in, in Hollywood we've already met, people in movies, we've already made some connections. And look, this isn't something, this is not a fairy tale. I'm going. I'm going. The question is, will you sew into what we're doing? Will you help us? I'm going to tell you a little bit. This gets a little disturbing on what is really happening in Hollywood. I've spent a good deal of time over the last um, uh, several months studying this. And today, I, my heart was just ripped to pieces, um, even going in deeper. Let me tell you about some stories. First of all, Macaulay Culkin. You guys know who Macaulay Culkin is. Home Alone. You know, the ah, Home Alone kid, right? Macaulay Culkin. He said this. He said, Hollywood is run by sat satanic pedophiles, one of whom boasted that his shoes were made of the skin of the deceased babies. I mean, come on. Literally, he said the reason he got out of Hollywood is because he was tired of being raped. That is just sad. That is just sad. Rodney Howard Brown. You guys know the revivalist Rodney Howard Brown. He said this. These people are full of the devil. These people can't even be reasoned with. Rodney Howard Brown said in a sermon uh, over the weekend, they have already given their soul to the devil. Are you with me? These people go through seances. These people drink blood. These people sacrifice children. They sacrifice children at the highest levels in Hollywood. They drink the blood of the young kids. This is a fact. That is why the next thing to be exposed will be the pedophilia that's going to come out of Hollywood and come out of Washington, D.C. The human sacrifice and the cannibalism has been going on for years. Guys, look. Rodney Howard Brown, he knows it. He's hip to what's going on. It's truth. And it, when, I, when I post this on YouTube, I'm going to post this with the links to the articles. Amen? Uh, that was in, look, this is in L.A. Times. A new generation of L.A. Satanists finds community in blasphemous times. Alexander James walked over to the altar where her husband Zachary waited near a bleached human skull, teeth locked. From the altar, she lifted a sword and drew, a po drew points across his chest while circle of, while circle of onlook, lawn, sorry, onlookers watched solemnly. An organist played an eerie minor key chords, and Alexander turned to the face of the group. On this altar, we consecrate swords to direct the fire of our unholy will. She said, a human skull, a symbol of death. The great mother Lilith created us all and will destroy us all. That was in the LA Times. Are you freaking kidding me? Are you kidding me? They won't, they won't put an article in about Jesus, but they're going to put an article in about this? I read multiple articles where, where satanic cults are meeting openly in restaurants and having seances in restaurants and Wiccan groups in restaurants. Look how, how much the devil has become common. Demons have become common in movies and homosexuality has become common in movies. It's all about technology and how it has, has it is separated. Isn't that wild that we live in the most technological advanced time of, 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 of any time of creation, but we are the most separated from God that we've ever been. Isn't that amazing? Listen to this. This is Katy Perry. Human flesh is the finest meat in the world, according to Katy Perry, who puts the exquisite flavor of the meat down to the taboo nature of the product and the fact that forbidden pleasures are always the most delicious. Wow. Isn't that crazy? Justin Bieber. The gate to, this was the article. The Gate to Hell. Justin Bieber speaks out about pedophilia and abuse in Hollywood. I'm going to read this to you. In the last few months, Justin had become a more active Christian and a regular member of a Bible study in Beverly Hills. Last week, he then shared a horrific story with other people in the Bible study, explaining how he felt he had to quit this tour and break away from the music industry. He was attending a party with many other producers, power agents, and different important figures in the music industry. A young boy had been brought to the party for a sexual gratification of the industry elite. And he was encouraged to sexually abuse the child. I didn't want to do this. I really didn't. They said the kid was drugged. It was horrible, Bieber said, explaining 
that it was made clear to him that if he would that he would gain entry if he did this he would gain entry to the business side of the industry if he joined the club by passing the initiation rites i wouldn't just be a performer i would be a mogul the path would open it up for me as it did for jay z it's the difference between being a millionaire and being a billionaire that was justin bieber Justin Bieber also has an article where he where he was in a Bible study and he explained how he walked into the back of a room and people are uh, around a dead child and they all have faces, a mask of, of animals on and they had drained the blood from the child and they call it wine, they call it red wine because what they do is they torture babies and they drink the blood. I know this is crazy stuff. This is insane. This seems crazy to people. And I might even be thought of as nuts for believing it. But I'm telling you right now, this stuff is real. This stuff is real. And it's because Jesus has been put to the side. And God is taking me. I really believe this. God is taking me. He is taking me to Hollywood to influence and to assassinate the mimicking, mocking, counterfeit spirit in Hollywood. And to usher in a spirit of authenticity, of Jesus, of the Holy Ghost. I truly, truly believe it. The question is, will you help us get there? Will you help us do it? Will you help us? Because it doesn't happen unless you do it. It doesn't happen unless we can get supporters. It's got to be a group effort. It's got to be a God thing. It's got to be. Amen. So I'm going to answer some questions. Are there anybody that has questions? Freaking out about uh, what you're saying. Are they freaking out? Just a, just a little freaky. It is freaky, guys. It is freaky, but it's real. This stuff is real. And, and I mean, you don't have to believe it. I'm not. I'm not asking you to believe it. I'm just asking you. Do, do you believe that Hollywood needs Jesus? Do you believe that? Do you believe that Hollywood needs to be influenced by Christ again? Do you believe that? Do you believe that we need to take media back? Do you believe that we need to take arts and entertainment back? Do you believe that? Amen. Amen. Yeah, and by the way, there are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of cases of this uh, of, of ch children being killed and sacrificed and, you know, if over the years, ritualistic sexual abuse. And guys, you know, I've been in inner healing deliverance ministry for almost going almost uh, uh, 17 years now. And how many people that we have taken through deliverance that have been ritualistically abused um, in, in, in sexual acts, uh, in Satanism, and cultic activity, and witchcraft. Look, it's real. I've seen it with my own eyes. I've seen people come through deliverance with my own eyes. It's so true. So, when are you headed out to California? That's a question I see. As soon as I can. As soon as I can. Uh, my my uh, hope was to be there by February, moved in. Um, uh, I, 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 it's just a money issue. Um, it's not a place issue. There are places everywhere we can get into a place. It's, it's a place issue in space. It's my wife, uh, uh, my children, uh, 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 Neil, my spiritual son, Jennifer, my spiritual daughter, and even maybe a couple more people are moving out, um, to help, to, to help get things launched, to help get things started. So it's a matter of getting, um, uh, a place that's big enough for everybody. Amen. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Wendy asked, uh, are you going to help people become apostles when you get to Los Angeles? Yeah, so the question was, am I going to help people become apostles when I get to um, Hollywood? Well, to answer that question is, not everybody's an apostle, but part of my apostolic calling is to abs absolutely equip. If he, Ephesians 4.12, that's where the name 412 comes from. That's the 412 um, LA. Um, is about equipping people to do the work. Equipping people to do the impossible. And, and, and equipping people to be apostles, prophets, teachers, preachers, and evangelists. And um, so if people are, are apostles, if that's their calling, yes, I will equip them for that. If they're evangelists, I will equip them for that and so on. Um, so, yes, absolutely. What else? Who else has a question? Wendy asked, how about partition of the gift of healing? 
impartation of the gift of healing? Yes, absolutely. We will be teaching um, people all about that. It, it, nothing is going to change with the style of ministry we have. We will continue to have the style of ministry we have. The influence will come by the atmosphere change and, and reaching out and networking into that environment. I'm not going to be going and standing on the corners um, in Hollywood screaming to actors and, and screaming to producers and things like that. It's all about networking and becoming, um, having intimate relationships, building relationships with influential people and changing it from the inside out. So, 50 people, I need 50 people at $100 a month, Donna. 50 people at $100 a month for one year. I'm asking for one year. That gets us, that gets us time to get in, and get, get something built, get it built up, and uh, to be able to be self-sufficient. Any other questions? Uh, Mari asked, are you going to be more of a part of movement in San Fran as well? Um, so I, I really believe so. My my base, my headquarters will be um, in LA, uh, but but we will be up and down the coast. I am not going to stop traveling. Um, I am going to travel primarily on the West Coast, so I can be in LA quite a bit. Um, I'm going to be in LA at least uh, uh, once or twice a week. That way, I can be there for meetings and and to develop those relationships and help build uh, our base there. Um, but, uh, we will be all over the place. I still do my engagements in Texas and, and the East coast and things like that. But my pri primary focus in this season will be the West coast to get this launched. What else? Um, no questions right now. Whitney says flip the numbers. Uh, flip the numbers. What does flip the numbers mean? people yeah yeah absolutely I'm believing for 50 at 100 but I'll take I'll take a hundred at 50 um, absolutely absolutely so uh, one person had asked yesterday are we still doing the internships absolutely the internship will still be going it'll still be traveling it'll still be happening but one of the interesting things is we will be able to plug the people from the internship program into uh, the church base there in LA as well and have them be feet on the ground helping doing evangelism in the streets and outreach and things like that, even to like Skid Row and, and making an impact in the city. Um, so yes, the internship will continue. The internship will happen. And, and uh, for those of you who don't know, the Wild Ones internship, where, where the goal is to take 15 people every 30 days, teach them the ropes of traveling ministry and what it means to be in ministry, bringing character alongside of anointing, and um, then plugging them in for a season into one of the churches or into a, in, even into another church that I know needs help um, to where they can learn to serve um, before they learn to lead. Amen? Anything else? Uh, Donna says you are a forerunner for what is going to break out in California. Bama Lamb. Bama Lamb. Bam. Amen. Amen, amen. And I don't think we're the only people coming. I, I don't think that at all. Uh, I think that there are other people, but I think that God absolutely spoke. I think it's absolutely um, his heart. I think this is it, and um, I'm going. The question is, who can I get to help? Who can I get to help? Mari asked, how are you going to get in there to minister to them? Are you, are you asking how am I going to get into Hollywood to minister? Well, that's what I was saying earlier, is that I, I have a knack. that God has given me a gift to, um, I just network, I just network, I know how to, I know how to network with people, um, God always, um, brings people, uh, around me that are influential, um, I, I always meet people, um, it's just a matter of, of walking through the open doors, and if I go, the doors will open, uh, I know that, um, I, I know people already in Hollywood, as a matter of fact, I was in, um, uh, a, a small town the other night, and here comes one of the guys from the TV show Jackass. I know him. I've, I've, I've partied with him when I was younger, um, when I was in the world. You know, those kind of relationships, they're just there. They just happen. It's, it's, a, it's just a way of, of navigating through people. A guy that used to go to our college group um, here in Kansas City lives in L.A. now, and his sponsor 
is uh, James Franco. That's just how things happen. You know, you just you just maneuver through the waters of where God takes you. you just listen. You say yes, and God opens up the doors. But the first the first uh, uh, key is opening the key to the city, getting there. We've already been invited by you know the ministries, many ministries. Have welcomed us in, said we bless you, we want you here, um, you know, and they know that we're coming to support what God's doing. We're coming to be a support to them, um, you know. To, we we believe in what God's doing through them too, but we have a unique call. Um, we're not trying to be the next big kid on the block. We just want to come and do what God has told us to do. What else? Uh, Wendy asked, "Do you have a word for 2019?" I do have a word for 2019. I sent it out. Um, uh, if you want to send me your email, Wendy, uh, I will send it to you. I have a, I ha released a newsletter with that word. Um, it might be an Elijah list. I, I got a couple of emails from Elijah list people today. I don't know if they posted it or, or not, but um, I will send it to you. What else? That's Neil over there, by the way. Hello. Neil, do you want to come over and sit on the couch with me? Am I allowed to? You're allowed to now. Uh, actually, I don't look that great right now. You know, he said he don't look that great right now. My hair's a mess. I haven't shaved. Should I turn the camera and yeah. show him? <laughs> uh, any other questions? Uh, How to do his chic and did it hate. Oh well, so it's just going to be God putting them in your path, and it's like a ripple effect. Absolutely, a ripple effect. That's a great way to say it, and um, that's what's happened with me through um, through ministry. You know, I know know all the top names, you know, intimately, friendship wise. Many, a lot of the top names of, of in you know Christianity and uh, speakers, worldwide speakers, prophetic people, and that's all happened through um, the ripple effect. It's all happened the same way. Um, is um, just trusting God, and, and He does it. And I never, I never went out to meet anybody. I just let God do it. You know, I never went out saying, "Hey, I need to meet these people." I'm not a. That one of the things that that is interesting is I'm not a. Uh, what do they call it? A st I'm not starstruck. I'm not yeah. starstruck. It, you know, that doesn't. People being famous doesn't um, doesn't really affect me. Um, and honestly, a lot of famous people like that. You know, that they. they they, they like people that are, uh, are just going to treat them normal and, and not, uh, what is this, um, and not, um, you know, be all weird about it. And so that's how, that's how God works it. <coughs> um, Donna uh, says, my voice is really not good. Uh, I want that newsletter as well. Do I send you my email address via messenger? Yes, yeah, just send me your email address via messenger and I'll look for it. I'll look for your email address. Or you can send it, you can just send me an email to DerekGatesMinistries at gmail.com. Any other questions? California. So, you guys want to hear another piece of the puzzle. Here's a little bonus for the people that stuck around. So, um, in 2011, 2011, uh, I was visited by um, an angel. And uh, the angel told me one thing. He said it three times. He said 25,000. This is Gabriel. I found out later it was Gabriel. The same, the same angel. What? What? Just got hit with some glory. <laughs> He's like in the glory. Um, the, whoa. So uh, the same angel, uh, Gabriel, would visit Bob Jones and told him the same thing. I didn't know at the time. And um, there's lots of things out there about where I was like the 25,000 thing. But um, basically the, the thing is, is that God was saying that, that he is going to raise up 25,000 fire hubs, um, you know, revival hubs, uh, points of impact in the United States to host the end time revival. Um, now, right after that happened, I got a call from Jeff Jansen. And uh, Jeff Jansen, I didn't know Jeff at the time. And um, I wasn't even really in the charismatic movement at the time. And Jeff uh, calls me and says, hey, this is uh, Jeff Jansen. I'm at the mall and God spoke to me about you. 
He said, the Zechariah 4 angel of awakening is coming for you to host revival, to awaken you for revival. I said, what are you talking about? What does this even mean? And so um, we, uh, uh, over the years, I, I just started working with this Zechariah 4 angel. And some people are like, what does that mean? Well, it just means that the angel of awakening comes with me. And I truly believe what that means is that when I'm in California, that that angel will be activated to the full extent. The awakening, the awakening is going to hit Hollywood. That's uh, the bonus feature for those of you that stuck around. Hallelujah. Any other questions? Uh, we do have, um, we do have Vanilla three, latte. Right now we have three, three questions. So Wendy asks, how about the courts of heaven? Are you willing to go for California when you get here? The courts of heaven? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm willing to do whatever God tells me to do. If God tells me to go to the courts of heaven, I'll go to the courts of heaven. Uh, okay, so two questions. I do as I see the Father do. Um, I don't make a choice to do something until I hear his voice or see him tell me to do something. Um, that's one of the secrets to uh, my success in ministry. Uh, it's one of my secrets to success prophetically. It's one of my secrets to success in healing, signs, wonders, and miracles. Is I do not uh, try to manufacture something. I only do it when I see the Father do it or I hear the Father say to do it. And that way I'm not manufacturing something. I'm only doing what he has called me to do. When we step outside of that, we try to prophesy out of our flesh, we get in trouble. We start to pro prophesy our own will. Um, when when I step outside and I try to get somebody healed to something God didn't tell me to, they don't always get healed. Sometimes I do, but they don't always get healed. I know every time if God says to do it, that they're going to get healed. Um, I don't go into, into things in ministry unless God says to do it. I listen and follow the voice of my Father. I listen and follow what He tells me to do. That way, I don't fail. Uh, Stalt House says, how do we know if we should let go of a dream or if we're just under attack and weary? Well, that's interesting. Um, I guess the real question is, do you believe that God gave you the dream? Do you believe it's a God dream? If it's a God dream, never let go of it. Never let go of it. Never let go of it. Uh, it may be a timing issue. Um, a lot of times we're weary because we're relying on our own flesh instead of relying on God. And uh, I know I'm probably not telling you anything you don't know. Um, but um, so oftentimes it's just a season thing. We may not be in the right season to see it happen. And um, so I would say if it's a God dream, don't let it go. Um, the enemy wants to burn you out so you do let go. Hold on, but hold on to Jesus tighter. And, um, you know, he gives you dreams, visions, um, and, and uh, aspirations to 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 drive you forward. When it says in Habakkuk 2.2, 2, when it says that the right to vision and make it plain, he's telling, he says right to vision, make it plain so that when it does come, so it's, it's, it means that look, just because he gives you a dream or vision, it doesn't mean it's for right now. It's, it means it's for later. Why does it for later? Why are you writing it down? You're writing it down. That way, when the enemy comes um, to fight you on it, because the dream is out here somewhere, the vision is, is here. You have to go through a process to get there. You can go back and you can read that vision and be like, nope, this is what God said. He said this. He didn't say that lie that you're telling me. He didn't say give up. He didn't say this. He didn't say that. He said this, and you fall back on what he said and stop looking at what the enemy said. Even though your vision's out there and you can't quite see it yet, you're like, oh, I know it's out there somewhere. You keep going back to this, and you believe for this. And it will come to pass. It's the process that prepares you for your position. It, it's it's that in between stage that crushes you. It crushes you to get the finest oil out of you. That way, when you get to your platform, you get to your position, you are the best one for the job because he's crushed all of the world out of you, and all that's left is him to succeed in that vision. That'll preach. That'll preach. <laughs> That'll preach. Hey. What else, guys? Other questions? Pentecostal Shuffle. Praise Dance. Praise Dance. It, praise Break. Praise you said there was three questions. You only got two of them. Uh, yeah, one of them was not a question. It was a statement. I, okay. I, when I first read it, I thought that. Any other questions? 
I got to tell you, the enemies really when we when we started this, um, when when we came to this understanding that God, man, as soon as God spoke this to me in California, was when a tree got hit by lightning at our house and broke our house. It, it literally broke five rafters in my house. I still got holes in the ceiling of my living room because I haven't gotten them fixed yet. God, one hundred percent, wanted me to do this. The enemy is trying to stop me. Uh, as soon as we started started really going forward with the mandate to do this, um, the witchcraft has been incredible. It is just crazy. But my God is bigger. My God is bigger. Man, do you understand? It doesn't matter how much witchcraft comes against you. It doesn't matter how hard the enemy tries. It doesn't matter any of these things. Our God is bigger. If you would just stay in the path, you don't break down. You break through. When the enemy comes at you, you don't bow out. You break through. When the enemy uh, brings a storm, stop focusing on the storm. If you focus on the storm, you can't focus on him. So it doesn't matter to me how much witchcraft comes. It doesn't matter to me. I'm pressing through. We had witches coming to our meetings in California two months ago when we were there. Witches coming to the meetings. You know what? Bam! Come get saved. That's what I'm saying. Hallelujah. Any other questions? No. Nope. Glory to God. All right, guys. Well, if you're just now tuning in, if you're just now watching, I want you guys to go back and watch the, the beginning of this. As far as I'm concerned, in, in, in our ministry, this is probably the most important live stream I've ever done because it has to do with where God is taking us and what he's doing. I know a lot of people don't like the fact that we're moving. A lot of people don't like the fact that we're moving from Kansas City. Look, I love Kansas City, and Kansas City is still my home. It's still my home. I'm not getting rid of my house. I'm not getting rid of my house. I love my house. I love my home. But God has a season for me where he's transplanting me for a season. What does that mean for Kansas City? Some people ask me, what, what does that mean for Kansas City? Look, the church in Kansas City will go on. There's a vision for Kansas City. And God is going to fulfill that vision. And we're not, we're not quitting Kansas City. I'll still be back in Kansas City. I'll still come back. I'm still the, the apostolic voice over 412 here. It's, that's not changing. That's not changing. Just like we have churches in other places. That's not changing. I'm still traveling. I'm still doing things. I'm not abandoning Kansas City. What's happening is God is expanding the tent pegs. He's expanding the tent pegs. People got to understand. You don't. You can't get pit. You can't. What, what do they call it? Pigeon. What do they call it? Pigeonhole. Pigeon yeah, into one thing. If God has called you into multiple, that, that that's the apostolic mandate on my life. Is to equip people to do something and then and then step back and let them do it. That's who I am. I you know, I equip people to do something, I'm going to step back and I'm going to let them do it. Now either either, you know, that's you can't micromanage everybody, and I don't want to micromanage everybody. I want God to use other people. I know I'm not the only one God speaks to, and I want God to use other people too. Amen. So, Kansas City's not going anywhere. Amen. Any other questions? All right. Well, glory to God. Hey, David. Pastor David. Glory to God. Um, hey, uh, I got your message just a little bit ago. And so I, I'm going to call you tomorrow. We'll set something up. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, glory. Hey, 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 hey. Glory to God. Well, God bless you guys. If you're just watching, go back and watch the video. Um, if you feel like you want to be one of those 50 or even 50, uh, if you want to get $50, one of the 100, um, you know, please message me. Please message me. Uh, I'm going to be saving this, and I'm going to send it uh, out in an email um, as well. Please still share this. If you're watching the the the, um, the uh, replay, please share this. P uh, post it in, in any of the um, groups and send it to people. Send it to businesses. Anybody who you think might be interested in helping with this vision. Look, God loves America. He's not done with America, he's not done with the world, and he's dang sure not done with Hollywood. And I am going there, and I'm telling you what, my feet are hot. My feet are hot. I can feel the Lord on my feet. Because he's going to be kicking some devil tail. God bless you all. Peace out and shalom.